In this course, you will learn how to build a weather application using React and the Open Weather API with locations that autocomplete. You will learn how to use two APIs to get and display the weather for anywhere in the world. Slobodin teaches this course. He is a senior front-end developer and experienced course creator. Make sure to leave a comment with something you learn in this course. Let's jump right in. Let me share my screen. Okay, first, uh, I want to explain where you can get the API keys for both of these APIs and what you need to install, what you need to register first for. Because in my previous tutorials, there were a couple of APIs tutorials where you guys were, were struggling to find API keys. So the first one that we want to use is on the Rapid API uh, website. The links will be in the description, so don't worry about that. Uh, you need to, uh, to create an account here on this website and uh, go to the to this uh, specific API, the link is going to be in the description again, and you need to subscribe to, to this API in order to test it. Once you subscribe to it, uh, you can choose uh, what, what you want to test. So you can click on the cities because we will need the cities for our weather application. Then you can choose what code you want to be generated for you. you can, I, I choose JavaScript and fetch. So you get the fetch method here and you get the options, uh, parameters which are required. So the first one is the key and here you get the generated key which is for your account and the host. And then the, the full URL and how you retrieve and map the data so it's really useful. Here are all the uh, parameters that you can use, optional ones and the uh, required ones. So yeah, it's very useful. So this is the first API. The second one is the, the actual uh, weather API. So you need to go open weather website link again in the description you need to sign up here everything is free you don't have to pay for anything so just go to your account you can click on your account here and you can go to my services to check what apis you have available for free and you can go and open api keys and here you can get your api key please register for your account and use my mine probably i'm gonna blur this anyways but yeah you should use your api key now that now we can go and create our application. So these are the things that you need to do beforehand. So I open up the D drive and here I'm gonna create our React application. So run the command mpx create react react app and name of the application. Uh, let's name it uh, react weather app. We weather app. And this is going to take a couple of minutes to finish. So uh, Stay around with me. And finally, our application has been installed and created, so we can open that in your editor of choice. For me, it's Visual Studio Code. It's in, on drive D, dev folder, React Weather app. That one, select folder. Uh, first, I want to install two packages that we'll be need uh, in order to create this application. The first one is the accordion that we need for the day's forecast. So npm install react uh, accessible accord accordion. That's the name of it. Okay, added one package. There are some warnings, but you can ignore that. Uh, the second one is uh, re npm install react uh, select async paginate uh, this one this one has some warning issues uh, compatibility issues actually because it's optimized for the older version of react it's going to be updated eventually i tried this library it works uh, as expected so but don't worry if you get the warnings and, and you will most likely if you if you're installing this on new on new versions of react just use the force flag in order to be able to install it but don't worry yeah you can use other this is like a wrapper library for react uh, react select uh, package it gives you some additional options so that's why i'm using this and that's it now we can npm run start and start start our application okay it starts the development server localhost 3000 and we have our application up and running that's nice okay so 
The first thing is first to explain you what we are going to have on this website, on these applications. We will have three components. The first one is going to be search on very top and we'll have two widgets. One is for the current uh, weather and the second one or the third one is for the forecast. So let's create a new folder here, new folder and name it components. Components, cool. And the first one, let's build the, the search. New folder, call it search. Okay. And in the search, let's add new file search.js. Okay. So this is going to be a component that is going to be using the async paginate uh, package that we just ins installed. Okay. So create const search and let's just create a dummy component to integrate it. So return hello and export default search. Okay. And we can use this component inside of our app.js component. Let's remove this boilerplate code. And we need to import our search component. Let's remove the logo. So import search component here. Okay. And we have our hello. Okay, nice. So I want to add some of the global styles to, to our application. So let's create a container here for the class name container. And I just want to add some maximum width. So it's not full width of the, of the window. So I can go to app.css, remove all this boilerplate code and just add the container container and add max width of 1080. And add a margin so it's centered. So margin is uh, 20 pixels and auto. So top and bottom 20 pixels, left and right auto. So it centers the the container. Okay, nice. Now I want to add a couple of global files, so uh, global styles, so that uh, we don't have to worry about that later. So for the font family, I want to remove this default one and add, let's add Roboto. And as a fallback Arial, and set that as important. Also, I want to add a background color. I don't want. I don't like the white one. So use the uh, D D five uh, D four D four. Yes, that's the one. Let's just preview that. Nice. Okay. This looks like it's cloudy. Okay, so we can proceed to build our search component. So let's close the app, index, everything. So inside of the of this uh, search, let's import the only component that we're gonna use, which is async paginate. So async paginate, this is the name of the component. And this component is gonna have a couple of parameters. So first one, let's put the placeholder. The placeholder is going to be search for city because we want to search for cities to show to display the weather for it. Now, the second parameter is the bounce time. Uh, we don't want to fetch the API uh, and call the backend every time that we pre press the key. So we want, I mean, we want, but we don't. If somebody is pressing very fast, uh, it's gonna send a bunch of requests. So here we are adding some debounce for 600 milliseconds. Then for the value, we're gonna add search, but we will create the search variable using use state hook. So const search and set search. This is for updating that variable, set search, okay. And we'll use use state hook for it, okay. And the initial state of this variable is going to be null, okay. Uh, then on on change method, we want to update this value and we want to emit that to the parent uh, to the app.js where we will fetch uh, you know the weather weather data and pass that to uh, to other two widgets. So on change 
we'll call handle on change. Okay, let's create that one. Okay, const handle on change. This will retrieve search data, the data that we entered into as impaginate component. And what we want to do, this is going to be very simple. We will use the set search method to update our search and we will use uh, search data for it. And then we will we will have the the event, the function actually, which we, which is uh, passed from the parent component. Uh, let's call it uh, on search change, and we will just call that and pass the data that we got from the input. Okay. Cool. Now what we need to do is we need to go and to add that that event. So go to app.js and on the search, add the on search change and add the handle on search change. Okay. So this can be static right now, so we don't we can implement that later. So just add const handle on search change and it will receive search data. It needs to be fed error function, okay. And just we can just console log that for now. Okay. Search data. Okay, cool. We can continue implementing the things that yeah. So as you can see, we have built uh, already uh, this uh, this autocomplete search, but it doesn't work because we haven't implemented anything yet. So what we need to do is uh, when we start searching, we need to fetch uh, the fetch the data, and um, how we can do that is uh, we first okay. So how we do that is let me see. Uh, we need to call uh, the method for loading the options. So here we, we have an additional load options property. And uh, because we are adding, uh, because we are loading the, the properties for the input uh, through async request. So we don't have anything downloaded uh, previously. And uh, we, when we type in some some characters, like for example, we are searching for London, we type in Lund, and then it's searching this API to find all the cities with that prefix. So we need to code that. So the name of the of the method is going to be load options. And now let's create it. Const the name of the method is load options, and this one. <clears throat> It, it will retrie retrieve the input value. So this is the value that we are typing in into the input. And we will use that value to pass into the to the fetch method, to the URL, and to get the data. Okay. Uh, so, so this is the this is the uh, this is the API that we use to search the cities. So here what we can do is we can go and copy copy all this uh, code and paste into our application, but let's create an uh, additional file for this. We don't want to store it inside of the search component, so let's place it in the source fo folder, new file, and call it api.js, like, like so. Okay. So what we can do is we can just copy the options and the fetch method, and we will extract the URL. So inside of the API. Let's export the options and call the options as geo API API options. So what is inside of these options is the method that we use for the fetch. And like I said, uh, in the headers, there is a key and a host. So the key is the one that you need to get into your account. And the, the host is uh, same for, for, for this API for everybody. Now we can, what we can do is we can create a constant. Uh, export const geo API URL and use this one. Which one geo and 
paste it here. Okay. Now we can use this fetch. We can save this file, go to search. And now we can use that to fetch. So what we need to do is we need to return new fetch and we can import now the URL. So this URL and we can import the Geo API options. So import from, uh, from API. Okay, from API, and we need to import uh, URL and Geo API options. So these are the parameters that we need to pass into the fetch method. Okay, so here I can add the uh, backticks so it's easier to uh, to implement the variables. So first is the API URL, then we use cities. And then what I want to do is if you go to to the API itself and if you check the parameters, you have the min population parameter which is optional, but with this parameter we can limit and uh, filter out the small places. If you're gonna search for bigger cities, you can enter like a million uh, people in in the city, and it will uh, give us much better search. So that's something which I'm which I which I want to do. So set the min population to a million users, not users, million uh, million uh, population. Okay, and then we want to add a name prefix. So for this one, we want to enter whatever we get from this search change. So Okay, actually from this input value. Let me format document so it's nice and... Okay, so that's it. Cities, we get the mean population, the name prefix. Okay, and once we get the fetch, then we want to map our response to the JSON because we get the... Uh, we, we don't get the mapped when we're using fetch. We don't get mapped right away using the JSON and then we're just logging out the response. And we can see what we get. Uh, later on, we can map this uh, to 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 match the format that we need for the async paginate uh, component. So let's test that out. If I open up our app, okay, let's see. Option is not defined. Yes, because we haven't implemented the options here. Okay, these are the options. Again, these are the options for the fetch method. And now if I open up the console, okay, if I type in Belgrade, let's say, uh, we get the data, but we also get some errors, let me just see, one, one at a time. So we get the data, the actual data, uh, yeah, okay, this is the initial data, uh, let me see what is the error, a uh, load option should be an object with an options prop. Okay, yeah. Uh, the issue with this is uh, that we are not providing the correct format to the to this input. So that's why it's giving the error and it's giving us this loader. But if I check the network, I can see that the fetch is actually actually successful. So we fetch, let me see the headers. In the headers we, sa we said, uh, this is the URL prefix is Belgrade. And for the pale, for the preview, if I open the data, we got two results, and the first one is Belgrade, Serbia, and the second one is Belgrade District. So it works, but the format for this input is not correct. So let, let us fix that. Uh, the format that it requires is an object array, array of objects with the value and label properties. So inside of the second, then we can format that. So return an object which actually has an options uh, parameter and this options parameter uh, needs to have an uh, array of objects. So we will use response.data and we can map that. Okay, we don't need uh, semicolon. So what we get here is name of the location or city, however you want to call it, city. And then we will return an object. Here we will have a value and a label. And for the value, 
what we need we need latitude and lo longitude in order to implement the weather api let me show you so if i go to to the services and for the apis let me just show you what is the required uh for the current weather let's say if we check the api call we need to pass in the api key the one that we got when we registered and we need to pass the latitude and lo long longitude so these two parameters we get from the geo api so that's why we need to store let me close that so that's why we need to store the value of latitude and longitude and we get that if i open up the console again if i open up the network tab again let's type in belgrade let me open up uh, you have exceeded the limit per second okay For, i have basic plans so you need sometimes to type in slower belgrade let's let's type in again okay let me refresh Uh, let me open up the network okay now we got it because i'm on free plan so it's limited you cannot send unlimited number of requests per minute but if we open up uh, this data we can see that uh, latitude and lo long longitude we have these parameters so let's let's copy them so for the value we got the we can use backticks and we will use city dot latitude and add a space and the second one is city city dot longitude it's hard to pronounce for me <laughs> okay so and later on we can extract this from this value and the label is something that the user can see or you whoever is uh, using the application so again use the backticks and use the city let's use the city dot we can use the name of the city so here belgrade and the country code city dot name comma city dot country code okay you see and that should be now correct format let me format the document okay let's try now let, let me clear the console if i type in belgrade it's searching let me refresh again And as you can see, finally, we get the name of the city and the code of the country. So if we select that, uh, we have selected the first value. And as you can see on our in our code, we are calling the on change. On change, we are calling the handle on change. We are passing the data. We are setting the new value. And then we are calling the on search change, which has been passed from the app.js file. And that method is just logging out the, the the value that we are getting here. So that's pretty much what we wanted to to get from from the search, just to get the latitude and long, longitude from uh, from the cities that we want. Now we can create new applica a new component, and uh, the first one can be the current weather. So we'll have like I said two two components, two widgets. The first one is going to show the current weather, and the second one is going to show uh the forecast for uh, seven days if available so let's create new component so add new folder name it current current dash weather okay cool and then add new file current weather dot js and we'll have a style file here as well. New file, current weather.css. Okay. Now let's import this, the style first. Import current weather.css. Okay. And let's create a dummy component so that we can integrate that into uh, import that inside of the app.js file and start building so const 
uh, current weather equals header function and then just export we need to return something here return just hello and then export default export default current weather okay now we can import that in the app.js file import current weather from from the components current weather and then just place that component in the return okay so we should get a hello yes here it is so here uh, we will use a little bit of CSS in order to style this nicely but stick around with me if you hate if you hate styling you, you, sh you probably shouldn't be doing a front end so yeah there's going to be more a little bit more of css so let's remove uh hello so this is basically going to be like a box small box and it will just display uh the you know the details for the current uh weather so let's add let a div which is going to be a wrapper and add a class name of weather weather okay and here uh, we'll have two sections the first one with the temperature and the second one the bottom one uh, with other details so add a div on top and that one will have class name exactly like that top okay so here on top you will have uh, two paragraphs actually two paragraphs the first one you'll have the name of the city let's call it let's uh, build now static and then we can implement the API. Belgrade and description, sunny. And let's add the classes as well. So let's add a class name for a city and a class name for weather description. Okay. And then on the right side, we will have an image uh, that will represent what is the, uh, the weather like. So it's nice and um, it has nice graphical representation so let's place an image and let's add an alt weather you need to to, to be careful about the accessibility add a class name of weather weather icon and for the source uh we need actually uh i have downloaded a uh, icons for for this open weather api and this will be available in the folder uh, along with uh, on github with with the complete code base so you can download there and follow along with me so and you, this needs to be included into the public folder so let me do that so for me that's in downloads let me show you it's in downloads so i will copy this folder and go to the public folder open that in file explorer and just paste so this folder contains all the all the states that we have for the weather so it will be available in the uh, github repository so you can download and use this exactly the same ones but you can use different ones as long as you follow the naming convention here you know when when it's sunny it's 01d.png and so on so we can use that one for a static one Okay, so the source is icon icons slash 01d.png. Okay. Okay, let me see. And yes, we got that. Cool. And I think I think that's it. So we have we have the name of the city, the description, we have the weather. Yeah, now let's apply some styles to it. So let me close all others and let me open up the, the CSS. So the first one, let's add some styles to the weather. Uh, this is a this is a wrapper. So let me just make sure it's, it's spelled correctly. Okay, so add a width of 300 pixels. And let me just see if it's connected properly. I always like to, you know, uh, to make sure that everything works, works correctly before I get too far into developing, right? Uh, border radius 
set the border radius to six pixels. So this should be a nice dark uh, box. So set the box, let's add a little bit of box shadow. So set 10 pixels. This is a, uh, these are the, uh, the parameters for the box shadow. Minus two pixels, 20 pixels. Set here the two pixels and set the RGB. We want it to be transparent black. So zero, zero, zero and 30%. This is a standard value for the box shadow. And you can see it adds a little bit of separation. Uh, add a color. This is going to be a dark, uh, dark box. So add a color, which is white and a background color 333. Okay, nice. Let's add a little bit of margin. So it's centered margin 20 pixels on top. So it's separated from the input and auto on the right side, zero on the bottom and the auto on the left side. Yeah, so now it's on the center of the page. Okay. Now let's style the the top top of the of the mm, oh let me just see if I this top actually needs to image needs to be inside of the top so yeah okay and we need to have a div around the paragraphs because I want to use the flags box in order to in order to align them so use a div or you can use a span whatever you want Okay, let's form in the document. Cool. Okay, so for top, I want to display that as flex. Display flex, justify content space between, so they are on the edges and align them in center, align center. Okay. Okay, nice. We'll add a little bit of padding here. Uh, on the weather, so it's not like that. So add a padding, add a padding, uh, zero on top, 20 pixels, 20 pixels and 20 pixels, okay. That's more like it, okay. Now let's ty style the city. That's the name of the class, city. So for the city, uh, let's leave it Let's leave it white. Everything should be white on this dark background. So font weight, 600, so it's it's bold. Font size, 18 pixels. Uh, line height, set it to one. So it's really close to the bottom. Uh, bottom description and uh, margin reset to zero. So it's one next to each other. Letter spacing, uh, set the letter spacing to one pixel. Okay. Let me see the result. Okay, that's nice. Now for the description, let me copy paste the class name. Okay, now set the font weight here to be a little bit slimmer, so 400 font size. This should be smaller, 14 pixels. 40 pixels, line height to be one, same as the city and for the margin again set reset it to zero so there is no space on top or the bottom okay so they are next to each other okay uh, now let's style the weather icon we just need to set the height I mean uh, the size here so set the width to be 100 pixels 100 pixels and yeah, that should do it. Okay, let's now continue on building. So let's build now. So this is the top part. Let's build the bottom part. Dot bottom, actually, add a class name of bottom. And here, add a paragraph with a class name of temperature. So this one will uh, will be showing the actual temperature. So 18 uh, degrees of Celsius. So I don't have, I don't know how to write uh, degree. So degree 
Celsius. So, Celsius. So let me just Google that and copy paste. Okay, I can copy the symbol here. Okay, nice. Temperature, uh, then below the temperature, I mean next to the temperature, on the left side is going to be temperature, on the right side is, uh, there are going to be details. So add a div with a class name of details. And here, let's add a div and we will have rows so we we will have label and then the value so add a class name of parameter row and inside of the row we will have <coughs> label and then we'll have a uh, value so for the first one the very top one we will just have uh, the label so span class name uh, parameter label parameter dash label and here we will say say details then create another row in the second row uh, for the label i'm going to create fields like and for the fields like we want to add a value to it so parameter label and the second one is parameter value value and the fields like could be anything like 22 degrees of Celsius. So let's copy this because I don't know how, how you write this uh, character. Okay, let me let me preview that. Okay, nice. Feels like we need. Uh, we actually uh, we will actually separate this. Uh, this will be styled using the flag, so it will be separate. Right now, it looks like. It's, uh, it needs spacing, so but let's leave it until we use the CSS to fix this. So now we'll, we will just copy paste uh, this exact row and add additional fields. So what I want to display next, so I want to display basically almost all the fields that are necessary that we have available on the Open Weather API. So add a wind and I mean wind can be anything, I don't know two meters per second then add another one uh, the humidity humidity goes in percentages so I don't know 15 percent add another row and for this one let's add a pressure pressure Add a value it goes in pascals i think yeah now what we want to do is we want to style this so let me just see what we have yeah this looks solid but we need to style it to look more much more nicer okay okay so let me first before i proceed for my document i like everything to be nice and uh, nicely formatted okay so here the first one is the uh, actually i think we can use the bottom one sorry i i think we can use the bottom styling to apply that to top top styling to apply that to bottom as well because i want it also to be display flex to justify content space between and to line them centrally so yeah and as you can see it looks better so i just want to make this much bigger and this a little bit smaller and separated so let's do that uh, okay, the first one is temperature. Temperature. So set the font weight to be bolder, 600. Font size to be re really large. So seven, not 700, seven. Width to be auto. Okay, a uh, letter spacing minus five pixels so i want this to be really really dense and margin 10 pixels on top and bottom and the left right to be zero and this is uh this is very noticeable so that's something that you want the first uh, the first thing that that everybody who is looking for the temperature details is looking for uh, temperature that's the most important thing so that's why it's the largest here and it's most no noticeable okay so for the details, I think 
yeah it's name details set the width to be a hundred percent so to take the rest the rest of the uh, the rest of the uh, space and add a little bit of padding to the left side to 20 pixels okay nice now let's st style the rows so the class name is parameter row so we want to display that as well flex and to justify content space between so that we have separation between the labels and the values like that okay now let's style the labels and the values parameter label and for the label align them to left font weight to 400 this is a default just reset that and font size to be a little bit smaller to 12 pixels okay that's more, much more nicer then for the parameter value okay align them to right right okay font weight this one this needs to be a little bit bolder so it's more noticeable the value and the font size to 12 pixels okay that's nice and the last thing is which i want to do is i want to add a little uh, border border on the details so on the top one so what about what i can do is i can go to details and top add a class here for this one save that and then what i can do is i can go and add a border bottom too uh what is the name of it parameter label okay parameter label dot top and border bottom so it's separated one pixel solid white let's see how that looks uh yeah i mean we can remove it we can leave it however you want it but maybe i don't like it so let's remove that let's remove the top i think without the border is much nicer like like so okay so now we have static uh current weather widget now what we want to do is we want to implement the real data and once we select something from this uh input search we want to see that so let's do that so what we want to do is we want to go into app.js file and on the app.js file and start searching here for the data that we have so what we need to do first is we we need to use the search data let if you if you check the console let me see if you check the console we get the object and here we get the label and we get the value so we need to split the value and get the uh we need to get these two values in order to search this is the location value yes Lat uh, uh, latitude and longitude <laughs> so uh, what we can do is we can search data dot value and we can split that so split that with the space character and store that in two variables the first one is let me see what we are storing the first one is the latitude and the second one is the long, long, longitude so first one is, be, is going to be a lat uh, latitude and second one longitude okay so now we have the values for the location and we need to fetch it so let's check the api to see what is the url uh, so we need to go to open weather api we can go to the current weather and we can just copy the URL. 
let me open the app here so because we are gonna fetch the two uh two api calls the first one is going to be for the current weather and the second one is going to be for the forecast we're going to use the promise all in order to fetch the both of these so how are we going to do that so let's create just uh, two fetches and store them into variables and pass that to the array of the promise at all so first one call the current uh, weather fetch and use the fetch method and here we need to pass uh, we need to pass the URL that we just created. So, but I think the smarter thing would be to create a constant in our folder for the API and export this. So go to API and export const uh, weather API url okay and we will need key as well so let's go take the key go to my api keys and take the key so x ex export const uh, weather api key Nice. We can save that and now we can use here. So we can, we need to import that first on top. Import the data URL from API. Well, let me just see. Oh, actually it's in the same folder. So it's from API. Okay. And we need to import the API key. API key here. Okay. And then instead of this API key, we can replace and put our API key. Weather API key. And then instead of this latitude, we can put our actual uh, variables that we got latitude and longitude and that should form our fetch so first we have the base url then we have the weather then we have latitude long longitude and the ape, uh, ape app id actually this is a shorthand word app id and that's the first uh, fetch the second one needs to be for the forecast so let's go and take that one so let me open up uh, my, plan, my plans and the second one is the forecast and we can take API call here as well we can close this, we don't need that anymore and okay, let me see and I can paste it here I can use this one to create another variable and this one is going to be uh, for forecast fetch and we are fetching the same URL. Uh, different is that we are using forecast now instead of the weather. Everything else is the same. Okay. And now what we can do is we can use promise, promise.all and pass an array of these two. So let's pass the first current weather. The order is important here because in order that we are sending the promises, uh, the return is going to be in that same order because we are going to get back the array as well. And the second one is going to be a forecast fetch. And then inside of then we, we need to call async function. We will get response. Here we need to map what we're getting and we will get in the first one, uh, we will get response zero dot json we, we need to call the json method in order to to map the the response so we need to use await and store it inside of the variable so use weather uh, weather response name of the of the constant and we can copy paste that to create a second one but we will use the 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 second or the, the index one and for that one, it's going to be forecast response. 
forecast response. Okay, that's cool. Now what I want to do is uh, I want to create uh, hooks, two hooks to store these two. So create a hook named current weather. Okay, I see that I have a typo current weather fetch. It needs to be fetch. Fetch and current weather fetch here. Okay, this is the right one. Okay, so current weather and the set current weather. Set current weather. This is the first hook. Use state hook. Okay, and that imports the use state. Let me see. Yeah, it imported here. And the value, the initial value is going to be now. And let's copy paste that. The second one is going to be uh, the forecast. And the method for updating that variable is going to be set forecast. Forecast. Okay. Now what we can do is we can update once we get the responses and once they are mapped to a JSON, we can update them. So set current weather. Set current weather to the weather response. Okay. And set the forecast to the forecast response. Uh, the only thing which I want to add, I want to extend the data that we're that we are sending and saving here because uh, the data that we're getting from the API doesn't contain the label that we're displaying, displaying, displaying here, like Abu Dhabi AE. So we are just getting like the city, uh, the country, sorry. So, but I want to display it exactly the same as it's here. So in order to do that, we can use the information that we got from Geo uh, API uh, database. So and extend our our objects to pass that. So what we can do is we can just add a city parameter and use the search data search data dot label and this label is coming from this search here so here we are creating this label where, where we add a city name and city country code actually country code not city country code but country code code of the country so let's extend it like like so and here just let me use a spread operator to create a new object from, from these two. And now we have the city for both of these. Okay. And we want to, at the end, if this fails, we want to catch and we want to console log. Okay. And that's it. Uh, in order to test if this works, let's just log uh, these two variables to see do we get the information that we need. So we need to get the current weather and the forecast. Console.log current weather. And console.log uh, forecast. Okay. And let's go and search. Okay, for now it's null. Let me refresh. Okay, let's type in again Belgrade. Let's select Belgrade. And as you can see, uh, we get the get back. The first one is from the line 28, which is the current weather. So we get the current weather. As you can see, we get all these fields like fields like humidity, temperature, and all that. And the second one contains the list, which is the which is the forecast for the future days. So it works correctly. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to pass the data to to our current weather and then display that instead of this dummy data. Okay. So here we can add uh, data and pass in for the current weather is going to be uh, this current weather variable. And we can check if that exists, then show the, the widget. If it doesn't exist, don't show anything. So, so that we are sure that if we are inside of the component, that we don't have any errors. So we can do this like this. 
So inside of the current feather, we need to uh, we need to get a data like like so. You can save this. You can save this, and now we can now we should go and uh, replace replace the things that we have there. So okay, let me just format the document before I proceed. And yeah, now we can work. So let's first do the top part. Okay. Uh, for the top part, we actually are adding this city uh, label, which which could be a location, but yeah. So call it data dot city. And for the weather description, let's check the API. We can check the network as well. Oh no, actually, network has been uh, clear, cleaned off. So for the description, let me see. It's inside of the weather, zero and description, broken clouds. Okay, that's the current weather here. So go to data dot weather zero dot description. Okay, let's save that up. And let's see, we have broken clouds, even though uh, the image is not uh, changed yet. So let's change that as well. So we get the icon, as you can see here, which we can use to load the image. So here, let's add the expression. Uh, let's add the backticks. Remove the double, uh, double quotes. And then instead of this name, we want to have this dynamic. And this is going to be data dot same as here, just the, the last property is going to be uh, icon. Yeah. And now as you can see, we get the cloud as well. So if we type a different city like London, London, okay, it took some time to, you can see that actually London is the same weather as well. So uh, let's see Miami. It's, it's nicer there, so yeah, cool. So yeah, let's back to Belgrade. Let's implement the rest of the properties. So that's, uh, that completes the top part. Now we go to details. Let's open up the bottom part. Okay. For the bottom part, first one and most important one is the temperature. So what we need to do is go to data dot. Let me see what was the name of it. Name and the temperature. Okay. Uh, I think that one thing. So one thing I forgot. Uh, as you can see, uh, the units here are not in Celsius, are in Fahrenheit. So how you can do that is you can you you can go to the URLs, and here uh, after the API you can add the units that you want to have. So you just you would just add units equals metric, and here also units equal metric. Okay, now we should get. Uh, the units in different formats. So let's see. Open up here. Uh, main temperature. Okay, let me refresh everything. Okay. Belgrade. Open up. And as you can see, it's 21 now. We need to round this because we don't want to show it like that. So, but yeah. It's, so it's in main and temperature. Go to data dot main dot temp, and I want to use the method round in order to to round that value. So use the math dot round. Okay. Let's see. Okay, that's twenty one now. And for the details, feels like so it's in the same uh, main. So basically the same as we did here. 
method round okay data dot main dot feels like just replace the temperature with feels like and that's feels like it's 22 uh, the next one is the wind so data dot let me see where is the data for wind it's here uh, wind dot speed data dot wind dot speed okay that's nice uh, for community data dot I think the community is under main as well. Yes, main community. Dot main dot community. And the last one is pressure. I think it's also under the main. Data dot main dot pressure probably. Pressure, that's that's right. And if I say that, it should give me all the informations. Okay, nice. So let's let's test that out so if i go and search for paris i recently been into paris so unfortunately it's broken clouds so let's try barcelona okay i'm trying to find something where is uh sunny but yeah it looks like it's it's cloudy every, everywhere in europe yeah but you can see it feels like it's 30 so it's updating everything and this looks correctly this looks nice. So what we want to do next is we want to uh, we want to build the second widget. Uh, if I go to the app.js file here, we are we build the search bar, we build the current weather, and the next thing which we, which I want to do is I want to build the forecast. Okay. So let's do that. Let's create new component inside of the components folder. New folder named that uh, forecast and add a new file forecast okay actually the file needs to have the JS extension JS and I think for this one we will also have a little bit of styles so add new file forecast.css cool so let's build dummy components so that we can implement that into API into the app uh, component sorry a const forecast and it's just export default export default forecast and just return something like hello okay now import that in the app.js file below the current weather so just call the forecast and import forecast next to the search so import forecast like so let's test if it works yes it works it's here <clears throat> so here in this component we will have a days like and accordions and you can click on the accordion on the on the box and it expands and show you the more information more details about a specific date and what are the details of the weather so let me close all the all the other components all the other files and open up a forecast js file okay so let me remove the hello and here we will use that uh, that uh, accordion uh, component that we installed oops let's remove that at an empty tabs and first thing on top I want to add a label which will say uh, daily so daily forecast class either add a class name of title and uh, add daily label okay I forgot to add here parentheses okay like so and then below that Add accordion accordion it auto imports it for me from react accessible accordion on top and uh, I want to pass a property which is called allow zero expanded so this one uh, allows allows uh, 
all the according to be closed if you allow zero expanded so it means basically all all according can be closed otherwise one of the according needs to be opened up okay uh so for the forecast uh, we are already getting the data we can pass that in so here we get the forecast data and we can implement right data right away so we don't have to do the dummy data so what we can do is we can check if the forecast data is there we can pass in the data otherwise don't display that up, uh, that component and inside of the forecast we will receive the data okay cool now inside of the accordion uh, we need to loop through that data to the through the list that we are getting so let me just open up so we are getting the list and these are the days of the forecast and we need to loop through these uh, days and get uh, the details similar like we are doing here but this is just the forecast you know okay so on the top uh, open up the accordion accordion item okay so and we want to use the data that we got and loop through the list data dot list dot and we want to just display the seven days that's it so use the splice zero seven okay nothing else and we want to map that here we will have item and index because we don't have index for the list and we need to use the index for the keys okay okay so here we need first to add uh, item heading so it's called accordion item heading let me see if it's yeah it's what imports it so the first one we need we need to have the two items inside of the accordion the first one is accordion item heading and the second one is accordion item panel so this is something that you see uh, when the accordion is not collapsed when it's collapsed uh, when you click on it you get the expanded part which is uh, accordion item pan panel so the second one is accordion item panel let me see item panel. this one okay heading Uh, but we need to have one parent that, that's what it says so one parent item so we can use the according item as a parent okay here and then we can place these two inside of it okay nice according item uh, but we don't have according item imported so let me import that uh, it should be up imported from the from this one import so it doesn't have to be separated separately imported so according item is here actually it's not accordion has been imported accordion item heading according item and according accordion item panel as well okay cool here let me format that okay nice now for the according item we need to add a key and again i'm gonna use the index idx and for the heading we need to place accordion item button that is the name this is required to do you cannot do it without it accordion item button uh, item button let me just see uh, okay let me import that as well accordion item button and then here you can just add a hello ju just for testing so let me just test it if i have imported everything correctly and there's no errors yes as you can see it's uh it gives us this daily okay i have a typo here used to be daily we have this label and we have uh seven hellos for seven days one two three four five six seven okay nice uh now what what i want to do is i want to create here uh the title basically the, the the day name and uh the show the the image of a day and the show the weather the 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 temperature the max and minimum temperature and once you expand the accordion you we will show the display uh details like like pressure uh and you know wind uh, and all the humidity and all and, and all other properties 
So here, create a div, add a class name of daily item, okay? And then on the left side, we'll have an image. Again, add an alt with a weather string, add a class name, icon small, and add a source, which is the most important one, right? So uh, add, the source is going to be again in the icons, and it's going to be the same as we did there, as we did in the in the current weather. So, but here we are accessing that from item, item, let me just open up, we can, we can reuse some of the code. Weather zero icon dot png. Okay, we can reuse this one. So item dot dot weather. Okay, let's save that. Okay, we get the broken image. Let me just uh, check again. Mm. Icons. Item icons weather zero and here is the icon. Okay, let me just log to see if we get if we are getting the right data. So inside of the weather forecast, we have the weather. No, actually, we have the main main and no, it's inside of the weather weather and inside of the icon. Okay, and what we are getting, see, it's 10N. Okay, maybe you don't have that icon for Barcelona. Let me see 10N. Uh, let me open up the icons. We have that actually. Oh, let me see what's happening. And let me see what is the URL. Maybe the URL is wrong. Icons 10 PNG. Hmm. Okay, yeah, we have these curly braces. Curly brace, actually. So this one, that's broken our URL. Okay, let's try now again. Belgrade, side Belgrade. Because Belgrade never let us down. Nice, we get the images. Okay, I'll open up the console so we can reference to it. Uh, the second thing which I want to add, I want to add a forecast, you know, which is the days. So add a label, add a class name. So it, it will say Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and so on. Last class name, uh, day. And I want to create a array of days. So here, let's create an array, call it a week, days, and add an array and let's call first Monday Tuesday with Wednesday thir Thursday Friday Saturday and Sunday okay that's nice now we need to first determine what is the day in a week. So if we are on Wednesday, if, if today is Wednesday, we want to get the forecast for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and so on. So first create a variable day in a week. And we get that by new date dot get day method. Okay, that's cool. And then what we want to do is we want to uh, determine day in a week so and get a number so this returns a number so if it's a wednesday it will return like three and then we want to cut off this part the first part and append it concatenate on the on here so we will have a uh, array with thursday friday saturday sunday monday tuesday wednesday that's what we want to do so how to achieve that is we use weekdays dot slice slice doesn't uh doesn't change the original array 
and we want to take uh, the the starting point is date. We have a typo here, date in a week. Date in a week, okay. Uh, so first, uh, the starting point is day in a week, and the second one is the length of this array. So weekdays uh, dot length, and then we want to concatenate that and use the again weekdays so concatenate the first part weekdays dot slice zero day in a week okay and that that should do it for my document and we can log in we can log that to see if it works so console dot but we haven't uh, created a variable, so create a variable const uh, forecast days, let's say. And assign there, and let's log the forecast days. So today is Thursday. So let's see if, if it works correctly. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So it works correctly. So the next day, tomorrow is Friday. Yeah. Happy day. Okay, uh, so now we can implement the days here, label day, and we can call the array, user array that we just created, the one that we just created. So forecast days, and oops, forecast days, and add the index, the index from the from the map. Okay, cool here then let, let me see how it works how it looks okay Friday Saturday Sun nice the next one we want to add a description so add another label add a class name of description and here we are accessing that via item dot uh, let me see here uh, weather dot description okay here Save that. Okay, let's try again. Let's try Abu Dhabi. Okay, clear sky. We don't have any space separation, but this will be styled uh, using CSS, so don't worry about that. And we will have another uh, label, call it min max. So it will show the minimum and the maximum temperature for that day. And uh, let me see how we get the temperature so main dot temp this is how we get the temperature so uh, so item main temp but we need we don't want the temperature just we want minimum and the maximum so let's open the main and we have the minimum is here and let's copy the celsius Okay, and we want to round that. Math round. Okay, and we want to display ma uh, maximum as well. Maximum should be max, I think. Temp max. Okay. Okay, and again, add the Celsius here, and let's format that again, and let's preview it. Then. Okay, yeah, now we get the values. Uh, for some reason, I see that maximum and minimum are the same values, so yeah, something is wrong with the API, but I guess they will fix that or not. But yeah, we will use the data that we got, it's not our fault, but yeah. Uh, this is, these are the ma maximum and the minimum values. So we get the the icon, we get the day, we get the description, we get the minimum and the maximum value. So what I want to do now is I want to style, apply some styles so I make this a little bit nicer. Uh, let me open up the forecast.css. Now let's start first from the style, from the title. Uh, how we get title. 
We close the other files. For the title, I just want to increase uh, font size, set it to 23 pixels and a little bit bolder. So font, font weight to 700. Okay. Uh, it doesn't work because probably we haven't imported the CSS. Yes, we haven't. So import, import forecast forecast.css okay okay now it should work uh, oh actually it's in the same directory so okay okay now daily works okay what I want to do next is I want to style uh, the first one is the title the second one is daily item okay so let me copy paste that here. Okay. Daily item. So set the background color to F5, F5, F5. So uh, the daily item is going to be uh, is going to be like I said, the panel uh, which shows you the state when it's not clicked, when it's not expanded. So it's going to be white almost white but once you expand it's gonna be it's gonna have the same uh, it's gonna have transparent background you will see set the border radius to 15 pixels I like border radius set the height to 40 pixels height to 40 pixels margin to 5 pixels so we separate the panels okay much nicer yeah, the image is uh, breaking the layout, but yeah, you can see how the panels are going to be uh, displayed. Align item center. Yeah, but before that, we need to create uh, to add a display flex. Okay. Uh, create a curse, add a cursor as a pointer, so so that the user knows that they need to click. Uh, set the font size to 14 pixels and add a little bit of padding. 5 pixels on top and bottom and 20 pixels on left and right. Yeah, that looks much better. Okay. I don't want to save anything, so uh, let me style the icons now so that it's inside of the box. So use the icon and set the width to be 40 pixels. Okay. As you can see now, it's much better. Okay, so now let me see what's next. Next is the day. So, the day in a week. So, set the color to 21, 21, 21. Okay, the dark one. Uh, for flex, set the 1, 1. So, what I want... Uh, I want the the name of the day and the description to take the uh, the equal amount of uh, the space and for the icon and for the temperature to go on the sides. So that's why I'm gonna uh, set the Friday day and the description to one in one flex. So it you know spreads around. Set the font weight to 600 and the margin left to 15 pixels. So it's separated from the icon, like so. So you can see, right now it takes uh, all the space, but once we set that to the description, it will split. Okay. So let's take the description. Description. Okay, set the flex to one, one, and let's see. And now you can see, it takes uh, it takes the weight of it. Flex one one, uh, margin right, fifteen. So it's moved on the right and text align to the right. Okay, that's more like it. Yeah. Let me just format the document and let's proceed. 
so now let's style the minimax the temperatures i just want to change the color so it's a little bit different nothing else uh color to 75 75 75 75 okay and this will give this gray color okay cool that's all already much nicer okay and let's see i think that completes that now we need to create the accordion panel so this is the part uh once we click on the panel it will expand and show uh, show us the more details so inside of the accordion panel uh, let's add a grid so we'll have again like rows and the labels so add a div and call it daily actually give it a class name first class name daily details grid okay cool and inside of it add another div and this div is gonna have a class name uh, daily details uh, grid item let's call it like that and here we'll have two labels one is going to be uh, uh, the actual label and the second one is going to be the value so label and this one is going to be the first one is going to be pressure and the second one we're gonna display the pressure so we're getting that from item dot uh, let me just see item dot name dot pressure okay main dot pressure okay let me just test this so we're waiting to re reload the page if it doesn't let's click something else so in right now you can see <clears throat> if we expand any of the these collapsible sidebars not sidebars but accordion sorry we get the pressure so let's enter all the rest of the details and let's style them so what i want to add is i can just copy paste these grid items and just change the, the, the labels and the properties so the second one humidity and it's i think it's in the same object okay it's humidity yes just change the community okay let's copy paste again now uh, the next one is clouds so the clouds are in let me see okay they have separate property clouds at all cool. okay Close it all. Then the next one is wind speed. Wind speed. And we can take the wind speed from wind.speed. Okay. Cool. Items dot dot wind dot speed and its meter per second is the unit there uh, then the next one is the sea level sea level and a sea level is inside of main sea level okay main dot sea level and the units is in, in meters so okay it's in meters and let's add another one feels like this one is most important i think so feels like how you feel so it's from main i think i think it's from main uh feels like yes and i want to round this math dot round <clears throat> and this one is in Celsius, so we can remove this. We can remove this. Yeah, I don't need that. Okay. 
let's try now so we can get the pressure humidity the clouds uh, okay clouds yeah clouds going percentage my dollars percent percentages uh, pressure also goes goes in Pascals I think I'm not sure what is the unit for pressure but yeah mm, pressure here and the community uh, in percentage as well okay okay now we have all the information that I want but we need we need just to style it so let's again let's let's type in Belgrade why not okay all well, the information feels like sea level wind speed clouds quick humidity and the pressure okay now let's open up the styles so uh, what is the name of the class that we added a daily details grid let me just copy paste that why not that is the easiest way to do though to do so without making any errors so add a grid uh, row gap zero okay add a grid column this is the gap obviously between the columns column grid column gap 15 pixels okay so the gap between the, uh, the rows is going to be zero and between the columns is going to be you know 15 pixels okay so add a column gap 15 cool display as grid in order this to work right add a flex one one grid template columns to auto auto okay let me see how that looks okay so we have the grid right now and uh, add a little bit of padding padding to five pixels on top and bottom and 15 pixels on the left and right and add a little bit of uh no for the row gap uh, that's it row gap should be zero yeah okay now the next one should i think it should be item uh, yes daily grid item so let's copy paste that one and align items to center display as flex uh, set the height to 30 pixels height to 30 pixels and justify content space between space between okay cool let me check how it looks okay we have some separation much nicer and i think that's pretty much it we just want to apply some of the some of the styles uh, yep. to the labels so I want this one to be a little bit uh, lighter and this one to be a little bit darker so the labels should be you know lighter and the values should be a little bit darker and that should you know that should do it so how we can do it is we can target it using the first child selector so we're targeting the class name the first child is this label the, sec the last child is this one so so first child and the last child but I mean for the label okay label and for the first child set the color to be again seven five seven five seven five seven five and for this one should be a little bit darker two one two one two one color okay let's add a semicolon there as well and yeah here we have a little bit a uh, little uh, here we have a little bit darker and here a little bit lighter so and i think that completes let me just format a document format this one as well and let's review what we got and what we built so if I refresh the application, let me close the console. What you can do is obviously remove the uh, all the console logs. You don't want to to leave that. So right now we can search for the city. Once we load the page, you don't you don't get any of the widgets. 
because we, are, we don't have any information. Uh, if you search Belgrade, because Belgrade is the closest city to me, we get uh, details on very top, like we like we built on the first uh, component, and the second one we get the forecast for the Friday, Saturday, for the seven days ahead. And if we click on the on the accordion, it gets expanded, and, and we get the additional information. So we can open up all the accordions depending on the day which we want to see the information. Then, if you want to check for another city, let's say we want to fly to the Paris and we want to see what's weather going to be like there and boom, it gets up, up, updated right away. So we can see that it's going to be very cloudy in, next day for the Paris. And that's it. That sums up. We built this awesome application. I hope you guys enjoy it. It took quite some time to develop this and uh, I hope you enjoyed it, like I said, and you learned a couple of things here and there. So yeah, that's it. Well, that's all for this React video. And thanks for stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe. Code with Sloba. Thank you for watching the entire video. To see more React tutorials, click here.